In western Uganda, both humans and wildlife live along the border of Kibali National Park. But their relationship hasn't always been as serene as these surroundings. A vast rainforest best known for its large populations of primates, Kibali is home to many protected plants and animals. As researchers learn more about conserving wildlife, they're also helping them to better coexist with their human neighbors. I still remember when I first landed in Uganda, the air just felt different. It was very warm and moist. And then when we pulled in, it's this beautiful forest and there were literally monkeys there to greet us. It was kind of like a dream, you know? And I feel really lucky that I've got to work there this, this whole time. 15 years later, anthropologist Krista Milich and her team are still waking up early to trek into the national park. Their goal? To understand the effects of habitat loss on one of the most endangered primates in Africa, red colobus monkeys. I go in the forest to study monkeys on their ecology, behavior, and see changes between red colobus monkeys that are living in locked areas and those that are living in unlocked areas. Moses Kuganza is part of the research team. He lives in a community that neighbors Kibali National Park and knows how to track down wildlife like no other. These are wild animals living in a big national park. That way? Yeah. Okay. Trying to recognize a monkey that's really high up in a tree. Those very real challenges, that's part of research. It means that there has been red colbus recently, they've just left. So we have confirmed it is our group. We've just seen Maggie and Red Type C. Those are most key individuals. So right now we are going to start our work. This research, along with the protection the park offers, is helping with conservation efforts. But the success of the park's wildlife is not always seen as a positive for the neighboring communities. They really feel this is a conflict with the wildlife because when there's an elephant in their garden trampling their crops, they feel that they have a conflict with that elephant. They use the term crop raiding and they use the term human wildlife conflict because that's what they're experiencing. With no barrier between the park and the people, wild elephants and baboons regularly leave the park at night to feed on crops. The neighboring communities became desperate. This was the start of Conservation to Coexist, a project that aims to protect crops by empowering the communities themselves. The participants in the communities who are the ones that we're concerned about human-wildlife interactions are the ones that are actually doing the work on the project. We facilitate it, we help them come up with solutions and strategize plans. Strategies include maintaining trenches and hanging beehives on wire fences to ward off elephants. Turns out, elephants don't like the sound of buzzing bees. Before we established bee fence here, it was a hot spot for elephant crossing people's farm. By that time you could find it's like a road, uh, but now you cannot believe that the elephants used to cross from here. This is our product. This is honey from the bees that we are keeping. Communities also now grow garlic, another product that can generate income, and families no longer guard their crops all night. Safe from mosquitoes, there are fewer cases of malaria. As tensions relax, the park and its wildlife are viewed more positively, helping everyone learn how to better coexist. The park is here to stay. We need all to stay together in good harmony. The collaborative spirit of this 
project, both with Red Colibus Monkeys and the communities, is rewarding and why I think we've seen so many interesting things as a result. It's really encouraging. It makes you realize if we work together, there's nothing that can stop us from achieving what we want. <laughs>